Hello, I'm James Barber, the Director of Technical Policy here at ICAS. Today I'm here to seek your views on some of the major financial reporting consultations which are taking place currently in the moment in the UK. Thankfully, I am passing most of this work across to you. I will be explaining some of the key elements of these consultation papers, but ultimately it's your views I'm wanting so that we can put in informed consultation responses to both the Department of Business Innovation and Skills and the Financial Reporting Council. The introduction of the EU Accounting Directive into UK legislation has to take place by July 2015. This will mean a number of changes in the UK financial reporting regime, particularly in relation to the accounting for smaller entities. At the moment, there are two consultations running. One is from the Department of Business Innovation and Skills, which closes on the 24th of October, and the other is from the Financial Reporting Council, which closes at the end of November. Both of these contain a number of proposals, and we believe it is essential to get the views of as many members as we can before we make our respective submissions to these respective bodies. Let's look at some of the most important proposals contained in these consultation documents. Firstly, the proposal is to increase the small company thresholds for financial reporting purposes only. This means that there will be a decoupling of the audit exemption threshold, which it is not proposed to increase, and that used for financial reporting purposes. So we would very much like your views. Do you agree with this proposal from BIS? Secondly, the proposal from the Financial Reporting Council is to withdraw the financial reporting standard for smaller entities. The Frizzy has been in use since 1997 and has proven very popular, especially with smaller practitioners. However, it is based on the old UK gap and the FRC is keen to remove this document. That said, it does plan to introduce a financial reporting standard for micro entities which would apply to those companies which satisfy certain thresholds. Those thresholds are a turnover not more than 632,000, a balance sheet total not more than 316,000, and not more than 10 employees. This FRISME, as it will be known, will be able to be used by a number of small companies at present, and it will be a very useful introduction in that respect. However, we are still very keen to hear the views of members as to whether they believe the frizzy should be withdrawn. You may be asking, what will then serve those companies which are not micro entities, but which are currently small and use the frizzy? Well, the Financial Reporting Council's plans are for such companies to use FRS 102 subject to certain disclosure exemptions. There are no exemptions planned for recognition and measurement principles, purely disclosure. Again, we want your views. Is that good enough? Are some exemptions in relation to disclosure going to serve that particular company well? The next proposal that we want your views is in relation to public companies. The proposal from BIS is to allow certain public companies to be able to take advantage of the small company regime and also audit exemption. This will not include those entities which are, have their shares regulated on an EU recognised stock exchange. However, this is still quite a change and so that's why we want your views. Additionally, in relation to turnover, the government is considering including other sources of income in the turnover figure in order to determine a company's size and of course audit exemption thresholds. That would mean, for example, that rents received could perceivably be included in turnover and mean that certain companies which currently are audit exempt may need to have an audit. Again, we want your views. Another proposal from BIS relates to whether small companies should be allowed to prepare abbreviated accounts, including an abbreviated profit and loss account and an abbreviated balance sheet for shareholders. At the moment, they can, of course, submit abbreviated accounts to Companies House, which contains only a balance sheet and certain notes. But this proposal actually relates to the main accounts that would be sent to shareholders. 
Do you agree that such accounts should be allowed to be sent to shareholders by such entities? Again, let's hear your views. Another area which we want your views relates to goodwill. The government is now proposing that where the useful life of goodwill cannot be reliably estimated, that it should be written off over a maximum of 10 years. Now this obviously is greater than the five years currently stated in FRS 102, but again it's something we do want your views on. So that's a summary of some of the more important issues contained in these consultation documents. There are a number of other important issues. I would urge you to read both consultation documents and help us by completing the survey on the website. We want to hear your views on these and all the other important issues. As a means of feedback, we will be holding a further session at which I will be presenting the results of the survey and also giving you a taste of the comments which we have received. I would like to thank you in advance for participation Remember, we are one institute and together we can be a powerful voice. Thank you for listening.